All right, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna break down my last two trading days. So Thursday and Friday, I didn't take too many trades Thursday, so which is yesterday. Only took two trades and only made like 1300 bucks. So I was like, ah, oh, man, only 1300 bucks. Do I need to make a YouTube video about it? So I didn't make a YouTube video. But today, I didn't make that much money either, but still 2600 bucks. But I took four trades. So I'm like, yeah, four trades is, you know, pretty good so i'm like now i was like about to record a video so i'm like you know what let me just break down my trades from yesterday and today both in one video so we'll be going over four different trades first we'll go over the thursday's trades that made me about 1300 bucks and then we'll go over the friday's trade that made me about 2600 bucks and um and then we'll wrap up the video okay so without wasting any further time let's jump right in and by the way if you're new to the channel my name is Samesh. i'm a full-time day trader and I've been day trading from 2018 or early 2019. And uh, I've been doing all right. I've been doing all right. I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> all right. So let's get to it. All right. Shall we? Without wasting any time. So just remember, Thursday, 1300. Friday, 2600. All right. Let's go break it down. Now, the first trade that I took on Thursday was Microsoft. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go on the bar replay and go to this so I can break down the trade exactly break down the trade that I took all right now first thing the first step that I was watching or the time frames that I like to watch which I'm sure we will help you later in the video or even now the time frames that I like to watch is two minute chart for first 30 minutes of the market open so that means from 9 30 New York time to 10 o'clock New York time so if you're in Pacific time first 30 minutes 6 30 to 7 that would be right and then I watch five minute chart from literally 10 o'clock New York time to um, 11 o'clock New York time. All right. And then I watch 10 minute chart on from 11 a.m. New York time to rest of the day, pretty much. Right. Which is for me, it's always 3 p.m. I don't like to trade the last one hour. I just don't like. Don't ask me why. I just don't like. I don't enjoy trading the last hour. There's too much going on. The candle kind of price is up like this. I just don't enjoy it. Or maybe I have some rough experiences in the past and I don't want to trade it. Right. But I only trade till 3 p.m. if I'm trading. Otherwise, most of the time I'm done by like 12 or 11 a.m. or 12 noon. Right. So remember this. Write this down on a piece of paper. On the side do five and ten minute charts at this particular time zone, time frames all right now let's go and break this down trade this microsoft trade was taken earlier in the day so which means i took this trade on a two minute chart okay now the market's about to open and this is how the market opens we literally push now what's happening in the pre-market just zoom out for a minute what's happening in the pre-market we are in a downtrend in the pre-market now what's a downtrend if you go to Google and you search downtrend, it's gonna give you like like this. What's happening here? This is the highs, this is the lower highs, then then we have lower highs, lower highs, and lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. <clears throat> so what's happening here is we have lower lows and lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower, low, lower highs. Right? That's called downtrend. So what's happening here? We made high, then this is lower high, then this is lower high. This is another lower high and this price point is another low high. That's in the pre-market and we are making lows, 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 lows as well. So clearly we're in a downtrend, right? And when does the trend reverses? The trend reverses when we break, uh, when we literally break the trend. We, instead of making a lower high, we make a higher high, higher than the previous one. So this broke, the moment it broke, I'm like, okay, the trend is about to reverse. I'm interested in this. Because if the trend reverses, I want to catch a move towards the upside. But I always watch 200 moving average. Like 200 moving average, two minute, be it I'm trading on a 2 minute chart, be it I'm trading on a 5 minute chart, be it I'm trading on a 10 minute chart. I always, always want to watch 200 moving average. Like what's 200 moving average doing? I want to do that. So if 200 moving average is sitting right here, I wouldn't go long here just because 200 moving average is there. You see what I'm saying? 200 moving average mostly tells me what not to do rather than telling me what to do. If that makes sense i don't use it to go oh let's short here it just tells me do not go long here if it breaks then i can go long because there's no 200 moving average on the top hope that makes sense all right if it doesn't just rewind the video here again it'll make sense all right now 
I'm watching this. I'm like, cool, let's see. And this is how the next candle went. We went from literally 421.8 to all the way up to 424.4. Now that's an uptrend already. All this downtrend that we had in the pre-market has already been eaten away. Clearly we're in an uptrend. And at the same time, we broke the 200 moving average. Now what's happening? 200 moving average is at the bottom. My brain is going, okay, do whatever, just don't short here up until we break this. So clearly shorting Microsoft is out of the picture now. But what's in the picture? The trend is there. I wanna go long. The trend is there. So what do I do? I'm not a trader who likes to trade. Another rule that I use is always trade the pullback. Right? I never wanna trade something that has made a big move already. I wanna trade when it makes a pullback. That pullback is where I like to enter and catch the next move because market moves in a structure like this, right? Remember the structure that I made before for the downtrend? For the uptrend market moves in a structure like this as well. Now we have made a low, we have made a high, or we need a higher low and then higher high, if that makes sense, for the trend to work, right? That's pretty much it. Now let's see if we get a pullback. I wanna get in a pullback. Now we have a pullback. Huh. What's happening here? We have a support at the bottom and the support is coming from the 200 moving average, right? Roughly around here, yes. And I look for confluences. So when I zoomed out, I'm like, okay, now I need to catch a move towards the upside. There's a 200 moving average on the bottom. There is yesterday's highs right here and this level 424, which was a critical level for me. I'm like, this all looking good. So I wanna catch, for me to catch a trade towards the upside, my entry would be at the break of this candle. Why? Because this is a pullback handle. I wanna enter the break of a pullback handle. Where would be my stop loss? If my entry candle is, this is my entry candle, this is my, where I'm entering, this is where I'm getting like stopped out. If the prices goes and couldn't make my profit target, which was 4, 425, I would get out straight away. That's just me as a trader, right? Now, my entry came the moment it broke out of this trend line, this particular um, entry candle. You see this pullback candle? Now what's happening here? Pay attention. We had a lows. This was a downtrend. We broke out of the downtrend. We started an uptrend. Lows. This is higher lows. This is the previous highs before the pullback. And this is higher highs. This is an uptrend, right? That's what I wanted to catch. And this is exactly where I started taking some profits. I started getting out, I'm like, sweet, whatever happens, I don't care. Like, of course I do, but I don't care to, uh, meaning that uh, my profit target 425 has been hit and I'm, I am about to take some profits. I'm about to pay myself for catching this move, this nice move towards the upside. Does it make sense, right? Now, this is why I took this trade and I got out because right at the market open on a two minute chart, you could understand on a two minute chart, it's a scalp time. Two minute chart is a scalp time. Five minute chart is kind of like, you know, scalp plus day trade time. And then we have 10 minute chart, which is mostly day trade time because it's a ten, it takes 10 minutes for a candle to close. So it's definitely a day trade. So this is a scalp move went from 424 all the way to 425 and broke 425.5. This was an insane trade. I think I made about 30, 40% returns, like within like this two minutes. And I was pretty happy. And I started taking profits around this 425, 425.4-ish. And then it started reversing and I jumped out fully. Okay, this was my first trade that I took on Microsoft. Okay, hope this was helpful. Hope this was beneficial. Also, the another thing that I wanna break down is the pullback candles that you do. Right, this is a pullback candle, right? Where the entry candle, entry candle usually have less volume. So this volume is also confirming, which is another confluence. Now your question might be like, what's confluence, Sumesh? Confluence is when we have more than two reasons, more than one, two, three, four, more than one reason for us to jump into a trade. First reason would be 200 moving average bounce. Second reason would be a kind of a flag. Third reason would be a low volume on a red candle high volume on the green candles. You see what I'm saying? So that's called confluences, right? And it paid, it paid, it worked pretty pretty good, right? Now let's talk about the second trade that I took on, which was on QQQs. 
Now you'll see this particular trade and you'll be like, oh shit, bro, what, what happened there? <laughs> um, all right, let's go and break it down. All right, so yeah, this is Thursday, QQQs, and I took the trade around this. Let's go further. Now what, what has started happening here? We started in a little downtrend. What's happening in the pre-market? We started a downtrend. You see what I'm saying? Now, my entry for the trade was towards, I know you're going to be like, why? Why would you do that? My entry was towards the upside. Right. Let me show you. We're in a downtrend. I, If I want to catch a move towards the upside, I want to catch, what? Yes, I want to catch a reversal. And this is this is the candle that made me think like, okay, reversal might be coming. Why? Because we broke out of all these lower highs and high, you know, lower lows. We broke out. I'm like, okay, this looks cool. This looks insane. Right. And then we started getting this, you know, little pullback candle. Still, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my entry and I'm chilling. And this candle right here, because it made a little pullback, it retested this critical level where we were rejecting right in the morning. Pay attention. This trade might be a little bit confusing because this trade didn't make me any money or decent money or probably at the break even because this trade was not the greatest, but I want to break it down why I took it. We had this rejection, this this bounce right here, this bounce a few times. Right at the market open, we had a few rejects right here. Price went there, rejected, went there, rejected, went there, rejected. And then we finally broke out of it with a lot of volume. And then this candle came down to retest that same critical level. I didn't enter here, no. I entered the moment this high broke, right? Which was the next candle, right? Now you know the reasoning, the confluence, there's a lot of stuff at the same price point, right? And it went a little bit and you know what happened then. Kind of, it worked. You know, if I would have stayed in the trade for like a two minute longer, I would have got paid, but I got stopped, not kind of stopped there, but just didn't pay the way I wanted it to pay. It just didn't work. And I was like, all right, man, it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? It was a, yeah, I'm just, this is just for me to let you know that doesn't matter how long you've been trading. Sometimes the trades that you take, even you can't define those trades. I tried to define this trade to myself. I tried to justify this trade to myself when I was trying to do my journaling. I just couldn't justify my trade. Like how I'm explaining to you, I just couldn't justify this trade, why I took it. Yeah, there was some reasoning, but that doesn't mean that if the, you know, if there's any reasoning behind a trade that I should be taking a trade. Yeah, there was a reasoning behind it that, oh my God, maybe it was rebouncing and this and that, or oh, trend broke, da, 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 whatever. But that does not mean that you know, if there's a reasoning for a setup that you should be taking the trade. I mean, it's cool and all, but is it though? You see what I'm saying? So this was a silly trade that I took and I should not have taken it, but it is what it is. I just wanted to break it down. So this was my Thursday. That's why I didn't break down my Thursday's trades um, in a separate video. And now let's look at the Friday, shall we? Let's do this. Now the first trade again was on Microsoft today. I made about $2,600 today, so you wanna, you wanna watch this till the end, all right? Now, what's happening here? We are opening pretty flat, like pretty flat, right? There's no solid trend in the pre-market, pretty flat. Now, the moment the market opened, we started on Microsoft, we started going down, which is right now, it's still in the zone. Like, it, it's all still in the, in the little, you know, little range that we have, the pre-market. I'm not watching this yet. And then this candle happened and I'm like, this looks good. Why? It broke below yesterday's low. It broke below pre-market low. And that's a clear sign for me that the stock is weak. Look how it's going. It went from 423 all the way down to 419. That's a $4 move down. You see what I'm saying? Now, as I said before, I'm a sort of trader who likes to wait for a pullback. Because I know for a fact, if something going to go down, it's going to have a pullback and then go down, have a pullback, then it go down, have a pullback, then it go down, right? Now I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, let's see if we get a pullback. And then we started getting a little pullback. See right there? We started getting a little pullback. I'm like, cool, sweet. Let's see if we get a nice entry. Now, I personally always watch these pre-market low areas, okay? Now, I, as I said, I like to trade with confluence. Confluence means more than one reason for me to enter. Now, this is a pre-market low. 
there's an ATMA approaching, this is the hourly level, there's quite a few things happening at the same price point, right? So I'm like, okay, it retested the pre-market low, broke and retested the pre-market low, and the retest works because some people who exited the position here, they wanna go short again, right? So when people start going short, that means they are selling their position or they are selling the shares in order to buy back later so they can make money when the trade goes down, but they're selling. When they're selling, the selling pressure increases and the stocks go down. And the volume on this green candle is pretty low. It's really, really low. So I'm like, okay, let's watch this. Let's see how it goes, right? And this is our rent. It had a rejection here. Now it's getting me excited. I'm getting excited over this. Why the green? If you pay attention to this red candle, the red candle had more volume than the previous green ones, which is a confirmation that clearly sellers are still in control, right? Now, where would be my stop loss here? I entered, personally, I entered the moment we broke kind of this flag pattern right here, but this was a kind of a level that I was watching. My stop loss was just 420, 420.5 because that was a kind of a pre-market low. I'm like, okay, if it breaks 420.5, I'll jump out. And I entered at 419.9-ish, right? So basically I'm risking about 60 cents for a potential move to low of the day and then 418.5-ish. That's, you know, or even, even low of the day initially, that's my goal. And then 418.5 and then potentially maybe down to 418. That's my goal, right? Which is pretty good if you think about it. This is the reward and this is the risk. Looks pretty good. Now, this is how the trade went. The first candle we kind of a bounce, we had a bounce around this hourly level. This is that one hour chart, 419.5, this is one hour level. We had a bounce and this is what happened. Price started bouncing a little bit. And you know what, at this at this time I'm like, oh man, not another bounce, come on, come on. Why are you gonna do this to me, right? Why are you gonna do this to me? You clearly are weak. And now you're gonna make a V-shape recovery, especially lately the market's making V-shape recovery. So I don't trust nothing in this market right now. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh my God, man. But I know in the back of my mind, I know my stop loss. You see what I'm saying? So my stop loss is 420.5. Like this is my stop loss, 420.5, all right? My entry was right here. My profit target is low of the day. I'm risking about, you know, 56, 60 cents. Do you make about a dollar, which is pretty good. And now I'm just like, all right, man, I'll just wait for my stop loss. If it gets triggered, it gets triggered. Then it went really, really, then it went really, really close. It went to literally 420.4. And this stage, I was like, oh, please, come on. Either hit my stop loss or you go down. Don't play around because it was playing around for like two, four, six minutes. Anyway, and now I'm still watching this level. And I'm st now I'm started watching this flag as well. I'm like, if this flag breaks again, because it already looks weak, I'm going to add more below this break of a trend line, 419.7. I'm like, I'm going to add more to this. You see what I'm saying? And this is how it goes. It broke. What did I do? I added. You see? I added. And I'm in the trade now. This trade has made a big move down. I already have some position that I entered here. I added some more here. We hit low of the day right here. And we were in decent profits right around here. I remember, I think we were about 40%, 35%, 40% in profit right at this stage, right? Which is pretty good because we are, it's a zero days to expiration. The contracts we are trading expired today. So I was like, oh shit, we will get paid. And now if low of the day breaks, next level is 418.5. And this is what happens. We started having a little, little pullback around this area. You know what I, you know what I'm looking, I'm thinking of, I'm like, I just took my profits. And it's giving me another flag thing for me to execute. I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? Which is where I added more right here, which was my second trade. Now kind of, this is like a third trade. If you think about it, this is my first trade. This is my second trade. And around here, I'm looking for another ad, you see what I'm saying? Which is the third ad to the same trade. Like this looks really, really cool. It can head down here. And what's the risk here? I'm like, okay, if I enter here, I'll just exit at the break of this particular green candle and I'm looking for a this thing. So I'm like, I'm risking 25 cents for a potential reward of 50. I'm like, huh, this looks really, this looks really, really cool. This is free money. And I did, I added the moment it broke. Now, yes, you'd be like, but hit your stop loss. 
No, it didn't. Why? Because the moment this candle opened, it went up first, right? Before my entry, I'm entering here. It went up, it got rejected, and then it went down. You see what I'm saying? It will be pretty weird for the this candle to be like, it opened here, goes down, goes up, then goes down again. Like this is what happened, not this, okay? So my stop loss not get tr getting triggered and I'm in the profit. I'm in profit and I'm like, oh my God, this looks so cool. This looks so clean. And then it hit my profit target even further. Now I'm in profits where the trade that I entered here, I'm in decent profit. The trade that I entered here is in a decent profit. The trade that I entered here is in decent profit. But also remember, I, keep, I kept taking profits as well. Before I took some profits here, now I'm taking some profits here because this is the level that I have for 18.5, right? And I'm like, okay, this looks cool. This looks beautiful, right? And then the next candle went down to 418, which was my another profit target level. And what did I do? I took some more profits. Now here's a, a trick that you need to use in order to take profits, okay? The trick here is very, very simple. When you're letting your runners run, let's say if you have 10 contracts, you take five off at your first profit target, okay? You took five off. Five that you have, keep taking a little bit off every time it hits your profit target, but the stop loss for this is break even on the contract. So that means if you entered, like personally, I entered at 1.35 on these contracts right around here, right? It was about probably trading around 1.8 when I entered again. So let's say this trade from this 1.8 had to reverse. So I took some profits around 1.8 and if this trade had to reverse, my stop loss would automatically get triggered or not automatically, like I will get out the moment these option contracts go back to 1.35. Like it bounces a little bit, option contracts go because I took profits already. I never let a green trade turn red. If I've already taken some profits on that particular trade, I am going to jump out the moment it hits break even so I do not lose any of the profits that I've already taken. The money's already in my pocket. Once it goes in, it doesn't come out. Does it make sense? Especially on a trade that has already made you money. That's not me as a person. See? Now I'm like, okay, sweet. I've already taken like I have taken some profits here, I've taken some profits at 418. I still have some runners. Right? What's the stop loss? Break even which is what started happening here. We had a big bounce, all right? And my break even, of course, got triggered and I jumped out. But this was just the trade that I wanted to break down, which was pretty insane, right? And now the next trade that I took was on QQQs. Again, QQQs, I love Microsoft lately. I love QQQs lately, pretty good. This trade was taken around. Um, all right, let's break down this QQQ trade as well. Kind of a similar setup, man. All right, keeping it real kind of a similar setup. We had a little bit of a downtrend. Again, this was not the best trade, but I still got paid about 10% on this, which is not a lot, but I still got paid, okay? Now, I could have avoided this because the trend was not actually there. This was like pretty choppy. I could have avoided this, like I could have avoided the trade yesterday, but this paid me 10%. But in my journals, I did my journals after my trading, um, and I was like, I could have avoided this, you know, I could have avoided this. This was, this looked to me like a forced trade because the trend wasn't really there. I mean, as much as you want to lie to yourself, oh yeah, but the trend was there. It wasn't really. This green candle coming in the middle of nowhere, that's not a sign of a solid trend. You see what I'm saying? So I entered the moment this particular candle or this flag thingy that's happening on the bottom broke towards the downside, oh. all right? It broke towards the downside and that's where I entered. Now, I got paid, don't take me wrong, I got paid, okay? I made some money, and this is the exact time when, when, we, had, um, when we had Microsoft dump in as well, so I was managing Microsoft and QQQs. I got paid, all right? But remember what I told you about negative risk management? The term is called negative risk management. So what is negative risk management, you might ask? Negative risk management means once you have taken profits on a trade, because you are managing your risk to a point. So if you enter 10 contracts, right, you take five and five off. So what is five? The five is the first profit target, which was around this price point. I started taking some off here. The remainder five becomes break even on the option contract. So just in case if the trade goes against you, the worst thing that can happen is it hits your break even stop loss. But, but what if it goes with you? 
you have zero risk zero risk why because you're not risking anything from your own pocket you have already taken profits and you enter at let's say a dollar for the contract and the profit you know it's at dollar 10 right now you are gonna get out the moment it hits the break even so you're not risking anything from your pocket which is called negative risk management so this is what i was watching i was like already took some profits i'm like all right stop losses break even whatever happens the next candle we bounced what happened i got out break even boom that's how i made 10 percent, which is pretty cool and i think more cooler than the trade was the actual profit management or risk management or the negative risk management on this particular trade which is why i wanted to break it down because imagine if you do not get out this is what happens you see what i'm saying now you're in a big loss what's the point like you already made some money now you gave back that money plus you're in a big loss i mean i never understood that right and now 10 o'clock uh, from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock i trade five minute charts but i couldn't find any trade and if i do not find any trade i just don't take a trade but i do not oh my goodness i was joking at this stage i was like literally joking this was bad i had the worst fomo but you gotta understand for having fomo is okay but doing something when you have a formal like you know basing your actions when you have formal is bad does it make sense i had formal because tesla st tesla started moving from 172.8 all the way up to this 178 and i'm like i missed this and this uh, this is what i was telling to myself somehow i'm like i when i'm in a trade nothing moves like this but when i'm not in a trade everything moves like this and i'm getting a formal now right but I never, ever, ever, ever do something which is based on FOMO. I'm too talented to trade based on FOMO. I'm too talented. I make too much money to trade a based on FOMO. You see what I'm saying? This is what you need to tell yourself. You're too talented to trade FOMO, right? Um, uh, man, uh, by the way, I appreciate uh, Hey, let me know in the comments. I'm sure you guys appreciate Like, look at the time. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. I could have gone to bed Saturday morning for me. I'm in Melbourne right now, but I'm making this video. You know why? Because I know for a fact, out of 1,000 views that this video gets, there's one person people, which is like 10 people, who are going to really get value out of this and they're going to start making money. I'm thinking of just 1%. Maybe it helps every single one of you. I'm making this video for that 1%. You see what I'm saying? Maybe you're going to help more. But that's motivating for me that 10 people are going to get to you know enjoy their life and with their families more than anything. It just gives me chills. Like literally, I don't know if I can show you literally my i have like look at this i have goosebumps it just gives me chills insane right anyway um this i was getting bad form which is where i took the trade tesla as well i didn't take the trade here i couldn't find an entry here but at the same time after 11 o'clock the moment 11 o'clock hits what i do i go on a 10 minute chart so i'm on a 10 minute chart now right and i ain't gonna lie around this price point to like here, roughly around this 30 minutes to 30, I think from this point to this point, like roughly around here, 20, 25, 30 minutes, I was just working out at home. I was just working out a little bit, you know, I was like not around to trade or anything. I was just like, you know, let me get my reps in because um, I'm getting health conscious now and I need to lose some weight because I can tell, like, look at this. I need to lose some weight and I'm, I gotta be honest with myself. Like, you see what I'm saying? And so I started being some health conscious and I was like, I don't want to miss a day. I don't feel like it. I don't want to miss a day. Let me just work out for at least 20, 30 minutes so I can just log it as a day. It's all about showing up discipline, right? And I did. Why I'm telling you this? Because the moment I came back, I saw Tesla setting up a beautiful flag at the top. Like, look at this. The volume is dropping. Clearly, we can see that there are some buyers sitting at the bottom right here over and over again because this is a 10 minute candle remember this is 10 20 30 from last 30 minutes we've been bouncing at the same price point clearly there are some buyers especially after such a big move we are bouncing and i'm just like okay and we are also kind of making a little flag on the top like okay 178 is a critical level that i have on my charts already i'm like okay this looks pretty sick right and now I'm like, all right, you know what? What I have got to lose? Let me just take a play. And I entered. The moment this break, and there's a confluence. You gotta remember, there's a confluence here. What's the confluence? Confluence is when there's more than one reason for me to jump into trade. The first reason is the trend line break. 
right? Second reason is the support, this resistance level break. The third reason is there's heaps of demand sitting at the bottom. The fourth reason is we have eight exponential moving average where the prices are bouncing off. Fifth reason is we are already in a strong uptrend. I'm expecting this after a pullback. We had a big pullback. Now there's a lot of people who will be buying at this point to push the price towards the upside. And I'm like, all right, let me see. My profit target was just 179 because it's a little bit later in the day. It's Friday. You know, it's Friday. I don't want to, you know, risk too much because I'm already up for the week pretty nicely. So I'm like, you know what, man, I am going to take some profits. I'm not going to lie. I took some profits when the moment it hits, it hit the previous high of the day. This is the previous high of the day. I took some profits here. I took 50% profits here and I took about 20, 30% profits here as well. I think 20%, 30% profits around here as well. And then keeping it real, I just didn't want to trade at this point. I saw this particular candle coming down, even though my break even wasn't hit. I saw when this candle was at one stage, this candle was red. Like, look at this, how this candle looks a minute ago. Look at this. It looked like this, full red. I I exited. I no, I didn't get scared as such, but I just didn't want to trade. I didn't feel like trading. Like, man, I'm tired. Just came back from gym. I need to have some, you know, I need to have some protein. I, I got to eat a little bit because I'm doing, which is nuts. I'm doing about 21 to 22 hours fasting a day and I'm eating one to two hours a day only. Yeah, if you're going to come in, in the comments, that's not healthy. I actually have a chef. Um, I have a, you know, nutritionist who, you know, so calm your farms. Um, and I was just super hungry at this stage. I'm like, oh man, I just cannot deal with this shit. I got it. I, I, got, I got out. I got out. Yeah, I got out. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But I still ended my day with $2,600 green. Probably, probably good. Um, this trade probably made me about like 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks, which is nice. I like it. I like the trade. And um, this was my day. All right. All the trades that I took from last couple of days, Thursday, Friday, I broke down for you. I hope this helped. I am make. I'm not trying to make videos as long as they're getting now. It's just like too much sauce, all right. So I'm sure you appreciate. And I, if you do, you are the person why I'm making these videos. You see what I'm saying? It's for you, so you can go out there and do something nice with the profits for your family. All right. That's a. That's all I have from. I see you later. And check the more information, the links and everything for my, you know, socials in the description below. And I'm out. Peace. You have a good one.